may not be suitable for all audiences. These colors are in remembrance of fall. Autumn is here, and I am wearing the colors of autumn on my body. There's more colors on my body than the rainbow in the sky, Daddy. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist, I'm a master educator, and I attempt to provide you with the best in art historical content. If you like the content, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all those things. It really helps me out. And hey, it's free, so you might as well take it. All right. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you for the, uh, the interlude, Mr. Berger. There are art exhibitions that have reshaped the way we think about art, that have reshaped art history and the direction, the trajectory things as uh, they unfold in the art world. And one, maybe more so than others, perhaps, are the Impressionists. And there are a series of exhibitions that took place in Paris in the mid to late 1800s. And today, we're going to take a look at the sixth out of eight of these uh, events that took place. So let's, uh, let's just jump right on and start talking. Let's go back. The fifth Impressionist art exhibition would result in several artists removing themselves from the ranks of the Impressionists that were showing in this exhibition and overall lukewarm reception to the whole thing. People weren't really upset about it, but they weren't really excited about it either. It was just kind of blah. And so we go into this, the sixth Impressionist art exhibition, which took place from April 2nd, 1881 through May. May the 1st, 1881. Most Impressionists wanted to be either a part of that salon exhibition, which removed some people from the ranks, and Degas was wanting to control who was allowed into the show, and that also removed some people from wanting to be a part of the show. And so there were a couple of negatives that were kind of working in there. But this fracture of the group was very much a divide between the approach of Edgar Degas and Gustave Calabut, who had very different ideas on where the show should go in their direction. Calabut wanted to remove all of the realists, namely Jean-Francois Raffaelli, who the previous year was his first year, but had huge numbers of work, and he really wanted to reduce that by basically kicking him out of the show, and very much tighten the reins on Degas, who was working to get more and more realists a part of this exhibition than ever before, and the previous year he had a very large influx of realist painters, you had the true impressionists like Camilla Pizarro saying things like Degas is a terrible man but frank and loyal, as well as saying things like Degas brought disorder into our midst. But in the end, it was Degas that got his way and that resulted in a flood in of realist painters into the group. No, no, no. It was Degas and Paul Gauguin that would assume control and they would secure a space that was a little bit unique. Instead of getting one big studio space to show a lot of work, they ended up getting five smaller rooms where the works were on display. There were somewhere between 170 and 189 works by 14 artists that were on display for that month period of time. And although they had control over what was going on, they very much needed Gustav Calabut and his organizational skills and his money to really pull off a much better show. But unfortunately, Gustav Calabut was at wit's end. He was done with it and he walked away from the Impressionist show at this time. Side note, although there were 14 artists that were represented in this exhibition, only 13 were living. Adolf Felix Cowles had passed away, and to honor him and his past representations in the art exhibitions of the Impressionists, his work was still on display for that purpose. Most of these artists that were in this exhibition were associated in some way, shape, or form with Edgar Degas. Again, 
namely Jean-Francois Raffaelli, who was very much the protege of Degas, and once again, two years in a row, he had more artwork included in this exhibition than anyone else would. And not to mention the fact that he's not even an Impressionist, he's a realist. The only Impressionists that still remained from that original core were Bertha Morissat, Camilla Pizarro, and Edgar Degas himself, who was really not an Impressionist at all either. So now you know. Yeah. You okay. can go what tell I... your teachers to take off because you've been taught by a genius. What did I forget? Paul Durant Ruel was getting more and more into the investment side of the Impressionist. He had always worked as a gallery owner and very much a promoter of what the Impressionists were doing. But it was at this time that he really started actively buying these works up and he wanted to put on his own show. So in 1881, separate from this show, he took the works that he had bought and collected put them on display for resale, and this was a much more cohesive, a much more true to what the real Impressionist shows were, and he did very, very well in that show. And it's also interesting to note that of all of the original artists that he had included, Edgar Degas was not involved in any way, shape, or form. But one of his works that was very well received at this exhibition was the first showing of his 14-year-old ballerina sculpture that he was originally going to put into the 1880 show, but the head proportionally was a little off, so he went back and reworked it and very much ended up with a result that he was much more proud of. And this was the only sculptural work that he had put on display during his lifetime. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Not only was Degas' sculptural piece very much iconic during this, or a positive during this exhibition, but so was Camilla Pizarro being very much lifted up as the exemplar of the Impressionist style. He had 26 works were included by Pizarro in the show, and they very much gave him some necessary recognition. He was very much financially struggling at this time, and it very much helped him get work and back on his feet and that sort of thing. And the recognition of Mary Cassatt, who was very highly praised by the press and the public, also kind of came out as a positive amongst all of the negatives of the 6th Impressionist Art Exhibition. These stand out as successes amongst the collapse, with many of the Impressionist artists walking away from the show, with many artists having hard feelings toward Degas around this time period, and we'll need to stay tuned to see what new opportunities arise as we go toward the seventh art exhibition of the Impressionists that would come in 1882. So stay tuned for that. Now I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoy being able to bring it to you. If you like it, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Take a look down in the description for even more content that's available uh, to you at uh, just a press of a button. And until next time, you have yourself a good day. And the young shall not know where lie the things possessed by their fathers that their fathers put there only just the night before, about eight o'clock. <laughs>